The Law of Success by Napoleon Hill. Arguably the most influential book written for entrepreneurs. First published in 1928, I think it's accurate in stating that every entrepreneur since has pulled some concept from this book. Myself being an entrepreneur in the finance space, I've been fascinated to notice that Napoleon mentions life insurance in this book repetitively, repetitively to the tune of 27 references across 12 different pages. I mean, the book title is not the law of life insurance success, it's the law of success. So why mention life insurance so many times specifically? I think anyone who's life insurance licensed should probably take note of this. Let's consider the failure rate of life insurance agents today. Let's take a look at what Investopedia reports. So the burnout rate for life insurance sales agents is high. More than 90% of agents quit the business within the first year. The rate increases to even greater than 95% when extended to five years. Now that's a high failure rate. But why is this? Let's see what else Investopedia says. Life insurance is a very difficult product to sell. Hmm. Difficult to sell. There could be a reason for failure rate if we're up to a difficult task. But let's see what Napoleon has to say about this in the book. Hmm. Life insurance is supposed to be the hardest thing on earth to sell. This ought not be true. With an established necessity such as life insurance, but it is. But what's he saying? that the most difficult thing to sell is something that's the most essential, something that every person needs. Does everyone need life insurance? Arguably, I would say yes. As a financial advisor, I would say that anyone, any age, I don't care if you're wealthy, middle class, garnished in poverty, you're gonna have a need for life insurance. But that's not what we're talking about today. The point is that if it's so important and so essential that everyone needs it, why is it so difficult to sell? Good question. Let's go back to the book. Why you ask? Here we go. Why? Personalities. 99 people out of every 100 who purchase life insurance policies do not know what is in their policies and, what seems more startling, do not seem to care. What are they really purchasing? A pleasing personality. So what are they really purchasing? Let's look again. Pleasing personality of some man or woman who knows the value of cultivating such a personality. Life insurance sales is not all about educating a client on the mechanics and the dynamics of an insurance policy in the inner works. It's selling yourself as a pleasing personality. I would be inclined to add to that description a trusting professional. So a trusting professional with a pleasing personality. That's the kind of advisors that we all should be. Financial clients need advisors with personalities that make them feel comfortable and secure. So personality equals success. So it makes you wonder, how did life insurance sales become so unprofessional? Let's move on to the next point. We see the why. Let's move on to the what to do. The making of the mastermind. The most successful life insurance sales organizations meet once a week or more often for the purpose of what? For the purpose of merging the individual minds into a mastermind, which serves as a stimulus to the individual minds. Could this mean training? As a team builder, how do you project that persona to your team? Or as an agent, from where do you receive it? Hmm, back to the book. From talks by the leader, and other members of the group, and occasionally from someone outside of the group. Meanwhile, the minds of the individuals are contacting and recharging one another. Yes, this is training. Each agent needs to be properly trained. Not thrown to the wolves, not thrown a bunch of product knowledge alone. What Napoleon Hill is saying that life insurance agents need to be trained to be professional. Not taught to use tricks and gimmicks to keep somebody on the phone not taught to tell someone that you're just here to pass along information and get them on through their day, especially not reading robotic scripts. He's saying to train agents to have that professional personality that connects with that prospect. 
Well, what else can we learn about life insurance from this book? So this is always fun. Here's a budget chart put together by Napoleon. Remind you, this was 1928. The top chart illustrates a properly allocated budget, splitting one's income into five categories. Savings, living expenses, education, recreation, and nice life insurance. But take a look at this bottom chart. So let's look at what the average person actually does with their income. The savings account gets nothing. 60% get poured into your basic living costs. Education's getting nothing. Recreation is a hefty 35%. And even though Napoleon is saying that 5% goes to life insurance, I would dearly doubt that. However, there is a lot of insurance purchased through the job, makes it nearly mandatory. So maybe that's what he means by that 5%. Before we leave these charts, I think it's fun to note one more thing. Napoleon puts in here that an experienced analyst, and I don't think it has to be too experienced to catch this, but could tell very accurately by examining one's personal monthly budget what sort of life that person is living. Is he wrong? So Paul, what's the point? Why are you analyzing the most famous entrepreneurial book from the perspective of a financial advisor? Well, how about I answer this question from another supporting story from Mr. Napoleon Hill himself. Napoleon says, I know a life insurance salesman who sells nothing but large policies. Before this man even approaches the subject of insurance with the prospect, he familiarizes himself with that person's complete history, including their education, financial status, eccentricities, and if they have any religious preferences. Nothing is said about the sale of life insurance during the first visit, nor second, and sometimes does not approach the subject of insurance until he has become very well acquainted with the prospective client. I think you see where we're going here. That is, he's building up a relationship of confidence so that when the time comes for him to talk life insurance, what he says will fall upon ears that willingly listen. Now, I'm not opposed to one call closes and quick sells. I think Napoleon is saying the agent or the advisor should prolong the sale. I think he's merely just driving it home that financial clients are not so much as buying into an insurance policy as much as they are buying into the personality of the financial advisor. Personality, professionalism. What kind of advisor do you think you should be? There's a reason that this book is the most influential business book out there today. So if you find value in this video, feel free to like, subscribe to the channel. We've got a lot more of this coming. If you are a life insurance agent or a financial advisor, feel free to comment below. I'd like to get some extra takes. Also, if you'd like to see a conversation, we've had one of the most successful life insurance agents that ever lived. We have an interview that will be available as a playlist with Patrick Bet David. We'll put some of these shorts right here. And if you'd like to watch that entire interview, we'll put the clip of that right here. See you next time.